Good morning, guys. We're here in the Ozarks. We got a beautiful morning for it. We're going to get out here and have a little bit of fun today. Uh, we're going to kind of go back to my roots and how I learned to fish around here. And uh, we're going to burn around with the wiggle wart this morning. It's, uh, it's something that is very, very popular in this area. It's actually, you know, where it was invented is where people started really using a wiggle wart and it got really popular. We're going to go out here and see if we can have a little bit of fun. What I started on here is just a little bit of a, a little bit of a channel swing. Uh, the deep water runs right up against this bank, and uh, it's got a. When you look at the bank, you know you see some of that really good ledgy rock, um, but you also got some some little bit bigger rock mixed in. I like that. Uh, I like it when you've got a good mix of different kinds of rocks all in the same area. I, my my favorite way to fish a wart, and I'm sure. You know, 90% of people that do fish a wart, uh, they like to parallel the bank like this. It seems like you can just keep your bait in the strike zone longer. Uh, you know, whenever I'm fishing a wart, I'm trying to catch them from 6 to 12 feet. It's kind of the range that I'm really shooting for um, whenever I'm throwing a regular wart. And see, there's other times whenever I know the fish are a little bit deeper, or even if I just pull up on a bank that's a little bit steeper and it gets deep faster, uh, that I'll throw a deep wart. You're going to see me uh, switch back and forth today, just depending on what bank we pull up on between a regular wart and a deep wart. So I'm chasing the wind, I'm chasing transition areas, I'm chasing where a bluff turns into pea gravel, where a bluff turns into chunk rock, where chunk rock turns into pea gravel. I want some kind of change. You know, some days you may catch them on the gravel on the points. Some days you might catch them on ledgy stuff back in the pockets. It's something that we're just going to have to feel out and figure out what's going on today. Put a little large mouth on the wiggle wart. Old school color. Man, they just one of those deals that doesn't ever get old. One of the first few bass I caught my whole life was on a wiggle wart just like that one. I'm still catching them on it today. So when it comes to catching them on a wart, you know people get really really specific with you know what's your favorite color favorite line size rods reels all that and you know my best advice uh, whenever it comes to cranking is is just keep it simple normally you know if the fish are shallow I'm, I'm throwing a regular wart you know I really throw probably about four colors and this is one of my all-time favorites it's Missouri crawl you know it's got that bright belly kind of a pink side and green top. You know, even though I keep it simple on colors, uh, Storm makes every color underneath the sun. You know, if you, if, if wherever you live, you don't have to worry about finding the one you like because it's, they've definitely got something pretty close to it. But, you know, for me, I'm gonna stick with, you know, my old faithful, you know, four or five wiggle warts and just keep going. And I feel like, uh, I feel like this wart's still kind of under the radar, really. And this is the deep wart. And this thing is a fish catcher. I mean, it is, it, it's got to be one of those baits that, you know, I was so used to throwing the old one. That's what I always picked up. But I, it's starting to more and more, this is kind of the one I start with. And then, you know, if they're shallower, I'll work to an old one. I like really getting that extra depth out of it. Gets an extra few feet than the other one. And uh, it comes in all the same great colors. A lot of people like to use real soft composite rods, you know, and I still use a soft rod. I actually just use graphite though, you know, I'll use a 7.2 medium. Uh, I've still got that real soft tip, but I like to feel what's going on down there. So I, I throw mine on fluorocarbon usually, 10 or 12 pound test. Um, this is a Bass Pro Shops Platinum Series reel. And a lot of times I actually throw an 8.3 to 1. Um, it's really, really fast, but it's easier for me to slow down and not have to work so hard. Uh, than it is for me to throw like a 6.3 to 1 and really you just have to work your tail off cranking it all day. Another reason why I use that 8.3 to 1 and I feel like it's really important is because of how fast I'm moving the boat a lot of the times. Um, that reel allows me to pick up a lot of extra line and I'm able to fish that crankbait farther down the bank whenever I'm moving towards it than I would be able to with the slow reel. And that's something to really think about because 
you know, the speed of your boat that when it's moving down the bank and the speed you're cranking, you know, that eight three to one is going to pick up a lot more line than your six. So you're actually going to get to fish probably, uh, you know, if you're going the same speed with your boat, you're going to get to fish an extra 10 or so feet of that bank that you would run over with your boat before you get your crankbait in. You know, we've had all kinds of different weather. We've had, you know, sun, clouds, wind, no wind. Uh, but, you know, the, the one thing that stays consistent is I'm always making sure that I've got some wind. That's just a, a confidence thing for me. I'm sure you can catch some fish if you don't have any wind, but whenever I'm throwing it, I've got to have a little bit of wind just to, it just makes me feel like I've got a better chance of getting a bite. You know, I think it pushes the fish up a little bit shallower and probably makes them a, a little bit more aggressive. Got one on the deep board. He got it on top of the hat. He's wearing it like a hat right on top of the head. He looked a little bit too close. Little guy. You know, so this place we're fishing right now, um, we're kind of in the back foot pocket, just fishing the last deep bank. And, uh, you know, this is kind of this is going to kind of be the first place that these fish are going to stop on their way out towards the main lake, and I like a bank that's you know you kind of, you look on my Garmin here. This is a, an ideal spot to me. It seems like you know we're back in a creek, the last deep bank. We're we're on this channel swing, and as you can see, you know I turn my Garmin to the left. You can see that shelf there. You know it gets shallow fast, but then you turn and look out to the right, and bam, you know it's a steep drop. So this is just a perfect example of a good channel swing bank, you know, just a great highway for the bass to travel and a good place to crank one up. You know, you'll notice whenever we get on some steeper stuff, you know, I might have my boat you know, almost touching the bank, almost touching the bank. But as long as there's just a little bit of a ledge out there anywhere from, you know, eight to 12 feet, they'll pull up on that ledge and you can catch them on the wart. Whenever I'm throwing a wart, I, I like to stay in really good contact with the bottom. I like to throw it. I like to throw the bait a little bit shallower than its maximum than its maximum depth depth usually. It's one of those things. I, I like that bait to be digging and really hunting around erratically. It seems like uh, the more wild your crankbait's acting down there, the better. Just like when you're in a creek when you're a kid, just chasing crawdads around and they're running underneath. You know, running underneath the rocks and doing everything they can do to jump away from you. You know, that's that's exactly what you want your crankbait to look like. You just kind of have to see what they're in the mood for. But most days they they don't want it just doing the same thing consistently. They want it acting goofy down there. You know that fish there? He was, you know, still. Same as all the rest of them on some ledgy stuff, but he was just uh, he was just on the inside of this pocket. We came around the main creek point here and uh, started around into this pocket. But you see, they're starting to you see we got big gravel here, and then it kind of transitions into some pea gravel on that ledge. So he was just on uh, just some ideal looking stuff. It's just you got to cover a lot of water to hit to run into some of this just perfect looking rock, you know, unless you want to just be starting up and bouncing around and only just fishing little 50 yard stretches. It's like you just got to take off and uh, let the fish tell you where they want to sit. Whenever I'm approaching a new lake and I really, I really feel like I can catch them on a wiggle board, you know, you've got the right kind of banks. You've got, uh, you know, you got big rock, you got channel swings, you got stuff like that. Um, you know, the colder the weather, uh, the more vertical type cover that I'm going to try to fish. You know, early fall, whenever it's pretty warm outside, you know, you may catch them uh, more so just on a little bit flatter chunk rock stuff. You know, it's just, uh, it's very, very season oriented. You know, early spring, I've had some of the best days uh, of my life cranking these things around. You know, just concentrating on those last channel swing banks going into creeks and going into spawning areas. We were fishing kind of mid-lake today. It seems like the halfway back in the creeks has been the best for us. Um, you know, we haven't had any bites on the main lake and we haven't had any bites all the way in the back of stuff. 
but it seems like the fish are coming out of the creeks and you know they're getting on some of those really deep banks and we're really targeting those those really deep banks that have that eight to twelve foot ledge and it's just you know the perfect depth to target those fish with a wiggle work. Just caught this little smallmouth. We we got on some steeper banks here, and uh, we're playing with the deep wart now. You know, we swapped to more of a brown phantom color with an orange belly. Um, but this this bank we're on right now is real ledgy and real steep. I like the deep wart in this situation. It's got a little bit steeper descent, and it's going to get down on the bottom a little bit faster and a little bit deeper than the regular wart. So maybe we can get on some of these steeper banks now and get to catch them. You might crank, you know, the first half of the day and, and it'd be really, really slow and not get many bites. But once that sun starts to get high, you know, and even into the afternoon, whenever it starts to go down, uh, it seems like sometimes those fish will really get active and pull up on the bank. And, and you can still catch fish even if you don't have, you know, the perfect windy bank or, or anything like that. If you see the right bank, you know, and maybe it's getting shaded or, or something like that, you know, it's, it's probably a great time to pull in and just give it a try even though you don't have the perfect wind. Big old pretty large mouth. There we go. Look at that deep wart right in his mouth. It's a pretty one there. A lot of days I'd like to have him. Getting on these deep ledgy banks, throwing the deep wart, big old largemouth.